don't believe anything you're told. Now, this may come as a shock from someone who's generating content on YouTube, but I want you to use this, uh, this principle as a check step, not only for, for me, but for everything you hear. And let me explain. Oftentimes in our industry, we get information from our colleagues and or our lecturers when we go to meetings. And the problem with that is, is there's a huge amount of internal bias that works into those presentations. And, and that's normal. That's part of human nature, right? People, people have agendas. Uh, those, that does, when we say they have an agenda, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It could be just that they have an intention to give you information in a way that convinces you. So they're trying to be influential to make things the way that they see them to be. The problem with it is, is that if you don't go back and look at the actual evidence, if you don't go back to the sources of the references that are being cited and do a hard scrub of that content yourself, you're going to find that you're not actually understanding the literature the way you thought you were understanding it. I'll give you an example. Uh, just recently, there's been a lot of people that have talked about abutment height. They've said taller abutment heights results in better outcomes. And so you say, okay, well, that's interesting. Let me go to the paper. And you read the paper, and the differences in the abutment height outcomes were plus or minus 200 microns. All right? So you say, okay, it doesn't seem very important clinically if it's 200 microns because it, you can't see it, right? I mean, 200 microns is very, very tiny, right? So you say, first of all, that doesn't sound like it's clinically relevant, but it's plus or minus 200 microns. And here's the rub. If you do a little more research, you'll find out that we don't have the ability to measure digitally accurately on radiographs below 400 microns. So what I'm saying here is that when, when we do an analysis with a radiograph and we're doing radiographic measurements, it's plus or minus 400 microns. 400 microns, guys. So if the, if the report that comes out says we found a clinically significant difference and it's 200 microns, but the ability to measure is 400 microns, which is bigger than 200, it means what they're measuring is noise. They're, they're measuring noise in the experiment, and they're presenting that as a conclusion. Okay, now here's the rub. When I first heard about this, the lecturer who said it from the podium did not say it was 200 microns plus or minus, because if they said that, I wouldn't be interested, and you shouldn't either, because if you have wound healing around an implant of plus or minus 200 microns, it's clinically irrelevant. It just won't make a difference in, the, in, in how the aesthetics or function of the implant work, okay? But how was it presented on stage? And here's how it was presented. It's twice as good. Okay? So they said because it was 200 microns, it was twice as good as this other method. And they said it was twice as good versus saying it was 200 microns. So what happens is, is that now people are running out and doing a procedure with a certain type of abutment because somebody from the podium said that it was twice as good. And what you remember and what you heard was that it was twice as good. And it is. It's just still clinically irrelevant because the magnitude of twice as good was still 200 microns and it was in the noise floor. So I see these kinds of things all the time. And the reason is, is because when I see something that doesn't jive with my common sense, which is practical clinical experience, then I go, okay, let me go and read that. So I take a snapshot of the, of the citation. I go to PubMed. I pull it up and I read it myself. And that's where you can really, really get into the information to find out whether or not the report that's being reported has got, got legs, so to speak, as if it actually has validity, or if it was a poorly written paper with a poor conclusion that is being maybe manipulated in a way to present an argument to sway you in a certain way to do a certain thing. So keep that in mind because at the end of the day, Really, really science-based evidence, evidence-based dentistry requires us, the clinicians, to read the evidence. You, you really don't want to rely on people and, and, and other people telling you. You can rely on other people to tell you to go read this paper and then do so. And, and that's where you're really going to get the, get the answers. And that, that, that holds true for everyone in the industry, including myself. So if I say something like torque doesn't represent stability, and you go, well, that doesn't jive with what I've been told. I encourage you to go read the paper and figure out why I'm saying that.
If you like this video, give us a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. If you haven't had a chance to experience one of our courses, come see what you've been missing at Stanley Institute.